Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for School of Motion. If you're following Motion Design News, you know that Epic Games just released Unreal Engine 5.4 Preview 1, which included new real-time 2D and 3D motion design tools. Previously called Project Avalanche, these tools make it possible to create real-time motion graphics just like this. And in this video, I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so before you do anything else in Unreal, what we've got to do is go up to Edit, Plugins, and you're going to look for the one called Motion Design. And mine is turned on, but you'll need to turn this on and you'll probably have to restart Unreal Engine at this point. Then you can go on to working and following the tutorial. Okay, so here I am in Unreal Engine 5.4 and I've got an empty level and I'm just gonna take this hex 3D object that I created externally in Cinema 4D and I'm just gonna drop it in here. And you could really just use any 3D model for some of what we're gonna do, but since I'm gonna be going with a honeycomb, this is the perfect shape. So you can see it's got a white material at the top, a glowing blue one on the side, and then red here. We're gonna change those materials anyway, but it was a good way to sort of block it out. Okay, now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is hit this motion design button and you'll see that it changes the interface. And one of the things that comes up is create defaults. And these are basically settings that the folks at Unreal felt were good starting places for motion graphics type work. So I'm going to hit create defaults and you don't have to do this, but this gives us some good places to start. I'm actually not going to use the post process or the camera and I'm just going to hit spawn. I can create a camera later. And once I've done that for now, I'm going to go from camera to default viewport. It's just the way I prefer to work. And you can see that we've got our object here. And then I'm going to go over into this whole area that's been added. And by the way, notice here, motion design mode. Normally we start in selection mode, but when we press that button, that shifted us into this motion design mode. And you can do that without pressing that button that we used before, but I just wanted you to know that it was here. Okay, so we're in motion design mode. I'm going to go over to actors and I'm going to add a cloner actor. I clicked on it, then I'm just going to move over here into the middle and drop it in. And I'm gonna select my hex object. I'm just gonna reset the position, make sure rotation is also reset. I'm gonna select my cloner. I'm going to reset its rotation, its position. And if we look inside the cloner, we can see that we've got this default cube in there that's being used as a part of the grid that it's creating. If I dropped in the hex and I mixed it in with the cloner, then it's using both objects. Now I'm gonna get rid of the cube and just gonna hit yes, get rid of that. and. Then I'm gonna make some changes to the cloner. So let me select the cloner, and then I'm gonna go down into the settings, and the first thing I wanna do is change it from a grid. I wanna change this over to a honeycomb. So once I do that, that looks more like what it is I'm trying to get to. I'm also gonna set this, uh, the width and the height count. I'm gonna set these up really high, 100 and 100. And that creates this really awesome field that we're in. And then I'm gonna go over into this view right here, look at it from the top. And once I do that, I'm gonna play with these values of width spacing and height spacing. So let me just lower that down a little bit there, lower that down a little bit till they're nice and tight. And then I'm just gonna go back to my regular view. Okay, that's looking really good. The next thing I wanna do is add in some noise that just that kinda has the whole thing kinda flowing and moving. So what I'll do is with my cloner selected, I'm gonna come back up here to the top and you can see that there's this option here called Spawn Linked Effector. And when I click on this, it will instantly add an effector in that is linked to it and that if you grab hold of it and you move it, you can see how it's affecting it. Now, I don't want this effect to be just raising things up. I want there to be noise. And more than that, I want it to spread over the entire thing. So instead of using a sphere as the type, I'm gonna set it to unbound, which affects everything. But I'm also going to set this up from mode, I'm gonna set this over to noise field. And then once I'm in there, I'm gonna change the location strength for the Z up to let's say 30. And you can see what noise is doing now, right? So if I pull back, you can see there's this big field of noise. I can also play with the frequency, make it more frequent, and that gets pretty crazy. I'm just gonna reset back to the default. And then I can turn on pan. And by activating pan, it controls the speed at which the fractal is moving. So bring it up really high and you have that. That's too high. I'm gonna set it down to 20. Let's see what that looks like. Maybe even 10, which is pretty good, I think. And then maybe even, you know, I'm gonna even take that down to like seven. Okay, I like that. And once I've done that, I'm gonna add in another effector. 
And to do that, I'm going to go over my cloner again, and I'm going to hit spawn linked effector again. But by the way, just so you know, in the actors over here in the motion design mode, you'll see that there is effector actor, and you can add that in. It's just that you have to link it manually. So here, if I just click on spawn linked effector, it gives me another one. And this is definitely more of what I want. It's right here. And let's pull in a little bit. We can see it being affected and it's linked. So let me go down to the effector two and just get into some of these settings here. And I'm gonna raise this up maybe to, let's say 200 for now, just so we could really see it. I'm also going to change the size of my effector. And so let's bring the outer radius up a bit. And since it's hard to see the effector right now, let's come up over to here and just choose visualize thickness. I'll set it to two for now, maybe even for that will really help me see it. And then finally, I can play with the easing. How does the fall off work for this effector? So I could maybe set the easing from linear to something like in out quint. And let me just again, I'm going to raise the outer radius of this and I'm bring the inner radius down. So we only have one high point, bring that to zero. I could go with something else like if you want to see some weird stuff. We've got like in out bounce and it creates some weird sort of ways that it's doing. And we can see this in motion. If I grab hold of the effector, you can see how it affects things. But I'm going to go with something simple like in out cubic and pull back here. And let me just bring up the uh, value a little higher when I set it to 300. And so now it moves through there. Finally, I want to add some materials to these objects. And what I'm going to do is head over into my materials for motion graphics here from the pixel lab. And I've got some that I worked on here. So I'm just gonna, I modified a few of them. So let's select our hex object and let's do a few things here. So for the white part, I'm gonna use this uh, silvery one right here. For the glowing blue one, I'll use this neon. And then for this red one right here, I'm just gonna replace that with this black brushed metal. Now we're not seeing anything. And I don't know if that's a bug or if it's just something you have to do, which is I'm gonna pull the hex out of the cloner for just a moment. And then I'm going to put the hex back into the cloner and that solves the problem that makes it work. So now we've got this, we can rotate here. You can take a look around to check out how it looks. And before I jump into the last part, which is just animating this thing, what I want to point out is, and this is important, something I've noticed is that sometimes you'll add materials to an object that you put inside of a cloner and it turns out that it just shows up as gray. Uh, so you don't get the material in there. If that happens, here's the way to handle that. I'm going to double click to open up this material right here. And within this material, this is a child of a master material. So I'm just going to go into the hierarchy here and I'm going to go to the master material. And what I want to show you is this one spot right here, further down, go all the way down. And you'll see that this area called used with Niagara mesh particles is checked off. Sometimes I'm finding that it automatically does this, but if for some reason it has not done this, go into the master material, check this off, save it, and then that should solve the problem. You, probably, you may have to take the hex out of the cloner again and put it back in, but that's what you should do for any materials that you're finding are not showing up once you put them into the cloner. They need to be told. They have to have that tag that says it can be used with Niagara mesh particles. Okay, the rest of this is pretty simple. Let's create a camera. Let's go to cinematic. So in a camera actor, with the camera actor still selected, I'm gonna choose actor, snap object to view. Then I'm gonna switch over to my cinematic camera actor. And I'm gonna pull out a little bit here. And here we are. You know, I think I'm gonna go into the noise effector, the first one, and I'm gonna lower the strength of that noise. So let's say we set it to like 20. That way we can see this uh, effector right here that's pulling up these other objects. So in fact, I'm gonna go back into effector two and maybe even set that up to 400. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, then next I'm gonna go into the sequencer and animate this all. So let's head over to the sequencer here that's been created. And I'm just gonna take the camera, I'm gonna drop that in. I'm also gonna set this to 24 frames per second. And that's gonna reduce the number of frames here. So I'm gonna bring this up to, let's say to 120 and uh, just get that to there, to the end. And you know, we can expand out, but that's fine. I'm gonna drag this out so the camera plays through the entire way. Then I'm gonna take effector two, the one that creates this raising of these objects. I'm gonna bring it in and drop it in as well. And go to the first frame here and I'm gonna set a keyframe for transform. So let me just click on this, click on transform, and 
we'll set a keyframe there. And then I'm gonna move all the way down to here. And mine is set to automatically keyframe right now. You can see that that's turned on. But I'm gonna grab hold of this, move it down. And I really should have moved it further back at the beginning. So let me just jump back to the beginning here and grab this one over here. And if I hit play, and there you go. Anyway, I hope that this helps you in your work. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe and do all that stuff below. And if you want to learn Unreal Engine, check out our course Unreal for 3D Artists with Jonathan Winbush at schoolofmotion.com. Once again, I'm Marlon Rabinowitz. Thanks for watching.